Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Path 11 Podcast. I am your host, April Hanna. At the Path 11 Podcast, we are here trying to deliver leading-edge research on consciousness, healing, and metaphysics. And just like you, we are trying to answer the big questions about life. Who are we? Why are we here? And what is our purpose? We hope by listening to our podcast, it will make each day you live on Earth a little easier to understand. And now for today's podcast. Hi, everyone. I have a great show for you today. It has definitely been a while since I've had someone on the podcast to talk about past life regressions and life between lives. I don't know if we've had a guest yet to actually talk about that. So I am really excited to introduce you to Peter Elson. Um, He has written a book called When Souls Awaken, Real Life Accounts from Past Life and Life Between Lives Regression. He was a Vedic monk for 21 years, and 11 of those years were spent in India. He uses his experience and knowledge as a therapist and life coach counselor, integrating both Western and Eastern schools of thought. He also has a background in philosophy, international cultural diversity, um, and into the field of clinical hypnotherapy, and also attained his PhD specializing in transpersonal and spiritual counseling. So I think we have a loaded show for you guys. Peter, welcome to the Path 11 podcast. Thank you. I'm very excited to, um, you know, just kind of pick your brain and talk a little bit more about regression work, uh, the work that you've done in your practice. And in this book that I have here, you actually have documented accounts from clients and uh, their regression work. And you've um, separated your book into a couple of different sections and giving some, you know, knowledge and um, just, just great advice when it comes to living life. And I'm sure that a lot of that comes from your experience when you were a Vedic monk. So I would love for you to share with our listeners a little bit about your journey um, and your past and what brought you to working with past life regression and professional regression therapies with your clients. Well, you know, it started real early in the sense that as a kid, I used to remember a lot of my past lives. Uh, Many of them came through dreams um, a lot of these places I ended up actually visiting again in this life. So the idea of past lives has always been with me from my childhood, although there was nothing in my direct environment. In I came from Holland, the Netherlands, that really encouraged me to think this way, apart from the support that I did have from my parents who were kind of yogi types, so they were open to the whole idea. So I started exploring the idea of of you know, past lives and and what does it mean? The idea of karma that is attached to the idea of of past lives and the idea that if past lives are true, that means I'm the product of these past lives. And also what it means to me early on is that I have a responsibility to myself to, you know, perpetuate karma in a positive way. So I, I became kind of aware of the consequences of what I was doing based on my past actions and um, aware of the situation I am in at this current moment as a, as a child living in Holland. And this kind of propelled me forward into the spiritual search really young from the age of 12, 13, 14, like this. But then, you know, I still was, you know, just a normal kid just doing sports and going to school. And I ended up studying industrial design uh, in yeah, in a school in Holland, in a in a college in Holland, which I finished. Uh, I worked a while, but yeah, my heart wasn't in it, so I ended up um, joining a spiritual uh, retreat center in Paris, near Paris. There was a great Indian saint who lived there, and you know they were kind of supporting me in my thinking, and I loved everything about it. So the search continued on, and then. From there on, it was a small step to actually living that life full on. So I I ended up becoming a Vedic monk um, first four years in Paris, and then I was 11 years in India, and then I was transferred to the United States to be like a minister in, in, you know, Eastern philosophy and giving talks, lectures, classes, and so on. And that was great. I mean, I, I, I was 20, 21 years a monk, and I, I loved every minute of it. But eventually, I felt there is more to life, and I want to explore different things. And then I kind of discovered Michael Newton, Michael Newton's books, you know, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
And I thought, wow, you know, I didn't know you can do this professionally. And so, well, it took years. I mean, obviously, you cannot just start doing this right away. I, I went to college again. I ended up leaving the monastery. Um, and not my spiritual search, but just the organized side of it. Um, went back to school for maybe about four or five years. Um, kind of got trained again, re retraining, and then you know using that my 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 Vedic spiritual background with the idea of exploring past lives was my passion, and you know it took several years until I was ready to uh, to go on into the past lives and life between lives. And that's what I've been doing now. That's what I'm exclusively doing right now. So this is kind of my journey. Mm, it sounds fascinating, too. And so I'm sure one of the questions that you get a lot is, why would it be important for us to remember past lives if we're trying to be, you know, very present in our day to day life and we are in this life right now and this is maybe the most important life? Why would people want to go to a regression therapist and and figure out uh, more information or to see if they had any past lives? What's the benefit? Well, what we do is we do both past life and life between life, and I think they're they're two wings of the same bird. The past lives really is giving us the context and kind of explaining, you know, how come that I have these certain tendencies within myself? I mean, I, I bet we, all of us we can find within ourselves some some tendencies that don't seem to make sense. Like on the one hand, you know, you may have this tendency; on the other hand, a complete opposite tendency. And nothing in your direct environment and nothing in your upbringing could explain these tendencies or certain talents as well, certain good qualities, certain not so good qualities. And you think, well, if I'm just a product of environmental conditioning, hereditary transmission and my parents and, my, you know, my environment and so on and so forth, then, you know, I cannot explain these tendencies because my background hasn't really caused, you know, certain tendencies within myself. So I have to look further. I have to go back further and try to understand, well, where is this coming from? And so it gives us a great insight into understanding certain origins of trauma, certain origins of, of great tendencies, certain uh, origins of, of um, talents. And if I have a bigger perspective, then I also will have a better, better understanding of what my trajectory is going forward. And also many times uh, when we go back into past life regressions, we see people having already experienced certain things. For example, I, I see a lot of people, they go back to, for example, a life as a Native American or something. And they have seen how wonderful they lived, how they lived in tune with nature, with the trees and the plants and the rocks and the spirits. And in this life, there is nothing there to remind them that once upon a time I was this person being so together. And so they go back into these experiences and they realize, oh my God, you know, I was that person. And it won't be too hard to retrieve that within myself and deep in my heart, this is what I'm longing for. This is what I've always been and how I've lived. And they start to realize that I gotta make change in this life if I want that kind of peace. So it's very helpful, it's, it can be very powerful. Now, um, do you run into uh, maybe some people or maybe even clients questioning what they're really experiencing in the regression work and feeling maybe like, this is just my imagination. I had to have made this up because how can you really prove it? Well, that, you know, when you do a regression, then you have to prepare your, your client. You just don't go in cold turkey I mean, I take a lot of time to talk to them before, um, to explain them the workings of the mind, and that's an art in itself. Right. It's an art in itself where you help to diffuse some of these doubts. You help them to understand the workings and the mechanics of their minds during the session. And you want to make sure that you address all these things before you start, because if you don't, then people are going to be disturbed during the session by all these kinds of thought that you mentioned. So it's a job, that's where you're being trained. And that's also a talent that you have or not have. I mean, school generally, uh, they may prepare you for that, but it's something that you develop over time yourself. If, if you're really 
you know, in tune with that yourself. And so you learn that as an experienced therapist to, to address these questions. Yeah. Now, um, I'd like to give you a personal example of what happened to me the very first time I went through a mini past life regression. It was um, a person who was trained in regression therapy, but they were teaching a non-credit course at one of the high schools. And I was very curious. This is when I just kind of first started on my spiritual path. And I said, hmm, I think I've had some past lives. I'm, I'm going to go to this little workshop and check it out. So she brought us through this, what felt like a guided meditation. And in my regression, I felt that what I was seeing was uh, back way back in time in like the biblical times. I could tell by, you know, looking down and what I was wearing. Um, I was a male in that life. And I remember her saying, um, someone will call your name. And in my logical mind, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to hear April. And in fact, that was not the name that I heard. And I wish I could find my journal entry um, to give a little more specifics, but I couldn't find it before this show. So anyway, so I had this name. It felt like that it was biblical. Um, they, she took me to the time of my death, and I had saw that I had died by um, an arrow coming through my heart and, um, and, you know, where the location was and everything like that. So my dad, knowing a lot about the Bible, um, I asked him and said, you know, have you ever heard of this name? Is, is this name in the Bible? And I was telling him all about my past life regression. And I actually found a passage in the Bible with the name that I was called, and that is how the person died in the Bible was exactly what I saw and experienced. Mm. Um, so for me, oh, you know, usually what I tell, you know, people that have past life regressions, or if I do any regression work, I always say it might be worth also just doing a quick little Google search or doing some research to see if maybe you can actually find some proof or evidence of this past life actually existing. And I have had people that have been able to do that. So uh, have you had experience with that as well? Yeah, there have been several instances where people were able to retrieve some of this information. I've had a lot of people that already before coming to see me, they have done a lot of research where they have found uh, evidence of things that they could remember. They, I mean, there's plenty of people that can remember their past lives even without doing re regression. And so they have done research. So, yeah, it's it's quite a... It's not at all an uncommon phenomenon that people will be able to trace back these things in history. But more than that, right, what's really more important than to, because a lot of people, when you go through this experience, you will realize like, wow, you know, particularly after the session, you realize like, wow, you know, even if you wanted to make it up, you couldn't because it's, you know, <laughs> right. it's stuff that is so far out of left field in relation to their current life. And you will, you can feel within yourself if you're even a little bit attuned that you know there is logic behind what it is that you're seeing. There is a story here, and that, and you are the product of that story. Like today, who you are is not just your parents, your environment, and your genes, but it's that story that is behind you of all these experiences that has made you who you are today. And so you can feel within yourself. That, you know, wow, yeah, you know, this fits so well in who I am today and it's so logical. And then particularly when you go afterwards to the life between life experience, you can really start to, to complete that story. So that might be a good uh, segue into talking about life between lives. Can you actually explain that um, so our audience knows what we're speaking about and what is this life or this period of time between lives? Well... You know, when we die, then what happens to the soul, right? I mean, where are you before you take another birth? And is there a certain, um, you know, logic or a certain system or is there a guidance that would determine your next birth? And Michael Newton, he was the pioneer, the godfather of this um, of this discovery, really. I mean, of course, in the Buddhist, you know, traditions... There's the idea of the bardos, the different levels after death. Uh, even the idea of a heaven in, in the Bible is, is also a, a, a similar idea. The only difference is that you wouldn't just be there. You would go there for a while and then come back. And so the idea, even in Christianity, of an overview, I mean, if you read um, Raymond Moody's life uh, books, 
uh, that a lot of people experienced near-death experiences where they had an overview of what happened in their in their last life. And so we, we, we find all these parallels and similarities when, when, when we take people from a past life, we take them through the death scene and then we cross them over to that sphere where you are neither in a past life nor in your current life, but you're in a soul state. Now, the question is, what is that soul state? Who am I in that state? That is an interesting question. A lot of people think that I'm just a soul, or a lot of people think that souls evolve. But I don't think that's the correct way of looking at it. The soul doesn't really evolve. The soul has wrapped around it the collective memories and impressions of all lives. And so... The experience in the afterlife is determined by the sum total of your past experiences in the same way that your consciousness today in this life is determined by whatever is in your subconscious mind. All the impressions you have gathered as a child um, due to your environment, due to your parents, due to your body and past lives is what determines your state of consciousness today. I mean, no two people experience reality here on earth in the same way. I mean, you can have two people standing next to each other and an event happens in front of them and you would ask them what happened. They experience it in a completely different way. Why is that? Because of these past tendencies. So the same is true after death. You take that collective memory of all these past with you. It's like a sheath that is wrapped around the soul. Now, spiritual evolution is when that sheath, the collective of these memories, becomes more transparent. It becomes more translucent. You work out issues, problems, angularities, and that sheath is becoming more transparent. And so the world after death also starts to change in the same way that it would change here. If somebody is on Earth psychologically extremely healthy, perhaps even highly self-actualized, what would their experience of reality be? I think somebody would be more loving, they would feel more unity with other people, more awareness of the environment, more love with animals. You know, you're more translucent, the idea of an enlightened being, of a bodhisattva, or whatever you call it, every, any saint on earth, is one that feels oneness with all things. So the veil in their mind has become really thin, so they start to feel that their soul and another soul has become all one and the same. Even every tree is one with them. Everything is one. And so the same ways we can transfer that into the life between life, that life between life world changes according to your baggage. Somebody who is very earthbound will experience an earthbound afterlife. Somebody who is highly spiritually awakened may experience a world after life that is just completely blissful and like almost an ocean of consciousness. So there are very great differences in the experiences of people in the afterlife. And in the life uh, between lives, as as a consciousness, are is this a little bit like a life review or a planning before we are being reincarnated into the next life? Is there, is it kind of like looking at the collection of experiences and trying to figure out how we can evolve in the next lifetime and what experiences that maybe we are looking for to have in planning that before we reincarnate? Absolutely, yes. I mean, some souls, they are capable of doing it by themselves and other souls, they have, most souls, I would say, they have a guide of some kind other beings that are ascended, they they may be people they know, but it, mostly they're, they're beings that don't reincarnate on Earth anymore. And they are there with them, and they, they guide people in the choice of what body to take, what country to live in, what set of circumstances to adapt. I myself remember this, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you know, before I took this birth, I remember standing there and being with a guide and remembering like, you know, oh, these are the set of circumstances I'm going to step into. And so definitely there is in that, irrespective of how high you are after, after, after death and you're in this in-between life state, 
it's very rare that somebody would not have to come back to this earth. I mean, there are souls that don't have to come back and then they will stay there and then from there they attain a degree of illumination enlightenment where they won't have to come back but for most of us most probably there may be another few trips and so that is well organized there is there is a system in place there is um, guidance that will determine what is the best situation for the soul growth to continue and that's not always you know, an easy an easy journey that some of these choices could be hard choices that we take on by ourselves for ourselves to accelerate our growth. Hmm. Now, another question that I have, and there may not be an answer to it, but I know as we are kind of here on Earth and Earthbound, we are governed a lot by time. You know, we have 24 hours in a day, 365 days a year. And I was recently... Um, at a gallery reading where a medium was, um, you know, trying connecting with loved ones of people who had passed. And he had made mention, and I thought it was kind of strange, like, how would somebody know that, where he was talking about reincarnation, and that when people die, if a new soul is born into the family that he, he doesn't believe or rarely sees that that soul will reincarnate that quickly. This could be a total belief system that this person has. I'm not even sure where he got this from, but he said, I think it takes about a hundred years before uh, a soul will reincarnate. And, you know, I've talked to uh, quite a few people and I don't know how you put a time limit on that, but, you know, as we're kind of talking about this planning of the lives between lives, I'm sure there is a process before the soul, if it chooses to come back into the body um, to do that. And my sense is, is in that space, there is no such thing as really time. But do you have an answer at all or an idea or understanding to that question if we were to try to put it into a time frame that we could understand here on earth, how quickly do we move through this process and how often can a person come back maybe within the year or within a month, or maybe they do re-enter and reincarnate very quickly? Yeah. I, my experience is um, that you cannot put a time limit or uh, a time date on it because some people may may come back instantaneously almost whereas others they may take hundreds of years um, it all depends on their evolution and whether the set of circumstances is suitable for their continued learning and you know often souls get born back into the same families in playing different roles depending on very you know strong karmic connections and so Sometimes it's there for, you know, you will find people born in the same families. One day it was the son, one day it was the grandfather, you know, and they come back generally quite quickly. Whereas other souls, they may take hundreds of years because they may only have another one life left or two years, two lives left, and they, they pick their circumstances very carefully. And so I think the concept of time is different in each dimension what we consider a long time here may not be a long time there because time is a relative concept um for example in the subconscious mind i mean you're uh, you you understand the subconscious mind because the work you do there is it is said that in in hypnotherapy for example that time does not exist in the subconscious mind right and which explains phenomena like ptsd for example uh, time in the subconscious, uh, a trauma will sit in the subconscious for as long as it will sit there, not changing because of time, only changing because you learn something new. Therefore, people can sit with a trauma for, for 40 years because it exists in the subconscious mind and the subconscious doesn't understand time, but they can also heal very quickly. I always give the example like if a cave has been dark for a thousand years and you open the door, how long does it take to light up this cave? It will light up instantaneously. So in the subconscious mind, trauma can be healed quickly if there's a shift in consciousness, a shift in awareness, but the shift has to take place. In the same way, in the superconscious mind, there's also no concept of time as we know it. Um, it is just more a state of being. And the higher you go into that superconscious state, the less time seems to be playing a role. 
Right. And this may also tie into as well that, you know, I've heard people say that all of these lives are also happening simultaneously because of that whole concept of time and space, you know, not really existing. Do you believe that that is to be true? You mean that somebody can have multiple lives at the same time? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. You know, I I have not much testimony of it, but personally, I believe that could be very well possible. Mm -hmm. But it's because I I heard it in so many other ways, hanging out with some of the saints I used to hang out with in living in India. But I don't have much of an evidence of it in uh, in during regressions. I've had one or two cases where people during the regression started mixing up two lives and they say they were living them at the same time. Mm. But, you know, it's not a consistent um, story. I mean, it, I think the idea of reincarnation is already for many people complicated as it is. And if you start to add into that the notion of multiple lives at the same time, it starts to really overwhelm a lot of people. So I personally don't really go there talking with people about it because I think that is already, you know, pushing the envelope. Sure. Um, Yeah. yeah. And um, I know that you give uh, quite a bit of accounts, you know, throughout your book, but I was wondering if you would like to share maybe one of your most profound or interesting stories with a client that you think our audience would really um, enjoy hearing. Well, there are so many of them. Uh, It's hard to pick one because every experience is unique in their own way. And um, yeah, I mean, I can recount dramatic past life experiences and then how that had its impact on the life between life. For example, I, I mentioned it earlier in another show, I think it was on coast to coast or something where, um, I met this, this person who was describing his experience in a concentration camp. And, you know, normally, which is kind of unique because we try not to go back to negative or traumatic experiences during a regression session. I mean, we actually give instructions for the soul not to go back to negative or traumatic experiences. But in spite of these instructions, this soul described life before they were put in a concentration camp as a very, very happy life. It was a very cultured family, um, full of music, full of love and friendship. And they lived a beautiful and really happy life. And then, you know, then the Nazis came to power and they were thrown into a concentration camp. And you would, I was like, oh my God, what's gonna happen now during the session? I mean, why are we going back to a traumatic experience? And of course it was, you know, beyond description of how horrific the camp was, But this soul was describing a very surprising experience in the way, not denying the horrors of it, because obviously it was was beyond terrible. But they described that at that moment, they discovered that they had a choice, a, a mental and spiritual choice to go through this experience defeated or to transcend it. And so they decided as a group, there were actually a few of them from that same happy life. They were all together in this camp and they were describing how they decided to concentrate on the love that they have been, that they had among themselves and the life they have lived so happily and joyfully before all this horror began. And so he was kind of hovering over this life and describing from a distance how amidst this horror, they managed to a certain degree to stay elevated above the horrors and to intensely concentrate on the love that they had among themselves in this dramatic setting. And then of course they died. And then they ended up meeting again in the life between life. And we, so we moved from the past life to the life between lives. And then we started asking them, well, well, how was this life and what was this all about? And they said, well, irrespective of the horrors, our soul group is a group that wants to perpetuate joy. And it's a soul group that that we decided to always focus on love and care and to help other people. 
And that nature of them was that healing nature, that loving nature, that caring nature. And then in this life, uh, again, he was born with some of these same soul members where they continued their caring and their healing and their nurturing of other people and themselves as well. So there was this incredible storyline that irrespective of the context of the situation they were in, where they had managed to elevate themselves and to focus on the highest of, of, of loving and caring experiences. And it was really, when I say it this way, it's very short, but it was extremely moving and extre extremely important even for me to see that, wow, you know, no matter what happens, the soul is such that it transcends all earthly things. And they were managing to express that while they were in this terrific situation. And so it was really something very, very special. Yeah, as you were telling that story, I was also thinking about, um, you know, you and your experience as you're working with your clients. I know when I work with my clients on many levels, they teach me a lot, <laughs> you know, and yeah. we're kind of in this together. So I'm just curious to know, um, it sounds like that you've had a lot of insight and you've had your own experience and your own investigation into your own past lives. But when you are doing this work with clients, how has, how does it continue maybe to impact you on the soul level of what this life is about? The greatest experience I have is to, is the realization that when somebody walks into my office that I, see right away though at that moment they don't see it that wow what a what a beautiful soul walks into my office they don't even know at this moment how amazing they are and after a few hours of this work they will be reminded again and it's just more and more you cannot judge people on the outside i mean i've had so many clients that walk in and if you're cynical type then you would think well you know how is that ever gonna pan out like into a great experience and then no matter who walks in no matter what their background is you know you cannot judge because people are so amazing they have lived so many lifetimes they their story no matter what set of circumstances they have been born in this time they are managing they are choosing these situations to accelerate their spiritual growth and so i am just like a witness to this incredible awakening among people of all stations of life that are just so divine and beautiful. And yes, there is a lot of, last time I was on the Coast to Coast show and afterwards some people contacted me, and yeah, life is evil and how can you say that? You know, it, yeah, there is, there is a lot of going on, and, but there's equally amount of good going on. But we never hear this, you know, we only focus on politics and negativity and the media but simultaneously among us all of us we are an eternal soul so in the same way that i was giving the example of that concentration camp we have a choice to focus on you know the positive or the negative and so if you ask me what what you have learned is to focus on the positive and to see that everybody in front of me is divine by nature and that is a different way of going through my day-to-day -day life, trying not to be critical of anybody, trying to be loving, and trying to see the divinity in all things, in all beings, in all animals, in all trees, and all things. So trying to make this living and breathing reality. Hmm. When you talk about your clients walking in, uh, one of the things that I was hearing without you saying is that it seems like you really recognize the wisdom that each human being holds. It's like when somebody walks in, it's like you're looking at them and know just with all the work that you've done that there is wisdom that just walked in. You know, if we have lived many yes. of these lives that, you know, we are, we are more than just the human being that we're showing up as in this lifetime, but that there is great wisdom there when you are, you know, in, re in relationship with, with every human being. That's kind of what yes. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. You heard right. That's how I, that's how I, I feel it. I mean, that is my greatest, um, treasure that I experienced meeting all these people, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. So mm -hmm. if, if people were interested in maybe uh, connecting with you or doing a session, um, do you do these online? Is it just in person? And where can people find more information about the hypnotherapy work that you're doing? 
Well, it's not online um, because it cannot be done online. Um, you can find me at either Elsen, is E L S E N, hypnotherapy.com, or at whensoulsawaken.com. And there's many buttons and uh, tabs that will point you to connecting with me, either call me or email me. But you can read my book, When Souls Awaken, that will help you get to know me and the work that I do. And uh, I travel a lot, so I go all over the place to meet clients. I go to California, I'm on the West East Coast. Um, so I, I, I'm pretty much available and in quite a lot of places at the same time. So not the same time, but available. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you are at the same time. You just don't know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Could be. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> well, well, Peter, w this was wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, it's been a while since, like I said, we've had anyone on the show to sit and talk about this. So I think it's always good and a nice refresher to get you know, people just thinking a little bit more about, about their past lives and the karma, like you spoke about, you know, and how to integrate it in this lifetime and, you know, just continue to evolve as souls and trying to do the best that we can and, um, making sure that we're kind to one another. So, uh, thank you so much for being a guest on the path 11 podcast. I really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a, it's a great honor and pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Path 11 podcast today. I hope you all enjoyed this show. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, I'd like you to do so because we are going to start putting some content over there that is only for our Patreon subscribers. You can get content for as little as donating a dollar a month, and it could just be a one-time donation. We have other freebies over there that you can get depending upon how much you would like to donate. And again, it could be a one-time donation, or you can continue to keep your subscription on a monthly basis at that donation level, but I just put my MBT immersive experience, which was a four day intensive meditation training in Tennessee with physicist Tom Campbell. I was listening to binaural beats, going to altered states of consciousness, having out of body experiences and life changing experiences that I was able to bring back uh, for myself, for my clients, for my friends that was just out of this world. So if you would like to listen to that, I'd like you to head on over to path11podcast.com. You're going to see an orange button that says Patreon. Become a Patreon today and you can have access to that podcast. And I would like to remind you to head on over to path11productions.com and check out the membership that we have for the Afterlife Awareness Conference. We have over 25 hours of footage with amazing speakers like William Buhlman, Thomas John, Terry Daniel, Suzanne Geisman, Suzanne Northrup, Linda Fitch, uh, Austin Wells, just a few people uh, to name off that were amazing. These workshops are just so valuable. So I think that you would really enjoy it. It's also a great thing to think about to maybe give the gift to somebody who is struggling with grief. If you are looking for resources, this is a great conference to send people to to check out. And thanks again for listening today. 